good midweek everyone at Rygate Baptist Church. We're back again in my little office at the, the bottom of my garden. We had a week off last week because I was doing a little bit of uh, self-feeding, if you like, giving myself some time uh, with God and, and reading and listening to stuff. And so I hope you had a good week without us and I hope you enjoyed Pentecost this week and I hope everything's just going well. We're looking good to, to come back in July, I think. So that's my hope, but we're just seeing if the, the government puts anything in place that says we can't. But otherwise, we've set the hall out, we've put a plan together, and we're starting to put things together that we'll be able to share with the church soon. So, very exciting. We'll be able to see each other face to face very soon, which is very exciting. Uh, so, I hope you're all good and all is going well. This week, there's something I want to share with you. In various forms, people have been talking to me about anxiety. And I've had emails, and I've had calls, and I've had texts. And anxiety is a massive thing. In fact, depression and anxiety, the whole mental health thing is a big thing. And, and that's something I just wanted to touch on today. I'm not an expert by any means, but I have had experience in this. So I'm going to try and share a little bit uh, with you today from my own experience and some of the scripture that's helped me and just give some thoughts. I'm not going to give you a quick fix. I just can't. It's so big and it's so heavy. So I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to give you, uh, you know, five ways to fix yourself. It's just not going to happen. But hopefully some of what I can give you can help. Uh, it certainly helped me and I've certainly had a great big healing in this area. So I'll tell you about it today. I want to read from Ephesians 6 verses 10 through to verse 19. Let me just read it to you and we'll pick some things out of it. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the, sword, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. I think we'll stop there for now. Anxiety, depression, what is it we need to know about those things? Well, I'm not a doctor, obviously, and it's not my area of expertise. However, there are many doctors that have expertise in, in your body and, and, and the biology side of things, but they won't necessarily have uh, any experience in the spiritual side of things. And I think that that's really important because clearly here in Ephesians 6, it says that the devil has many schemes that he wants to try against you. What we're talking about when we talk about the devil is someone that is very powerful. Now, some people mock the devil. I don't think that's a very good idea. Uh, some people uh, talk a lot about the power they have over him. Jesus told his, his disciples off uh, for, for boasting about casting out devils. All right. He said you should be more pleased that your name is in the, hev in the heavenly book. You know, So it's really important that we don't mock him. And it's really important we don't underestimate him. Because if you're working in the flesh, living in the fleshfulness, the carnality of life, and not in the spirit, not working with God and walking with God and walking in his power, then Satan is extremely powerful. He's extremely powerful, more powerful than any man or woman on this earth. So we must take him seriously. And the best way to defeat him is in the spiritual realm, is to take the name of Jesus in your life, to understand the power that's in his name, and understand what his blood has done for you. Then you're in a position to stand, but let's not forget that he has many schemes. We also want to just draw your attention further down. You know, we talk about the arm of God, but there's one thing in here that gives something away. And it says this, it says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. What does it mean by flaming arrows? Well, arrows are something that you fire 
at someone. And, and you think about the castles in the past where they used to just fire the arrows in and out to try and get each other from a distance. The devil's like this. He will fire things into your mind, into your heart, into your soul, into you to knock you off course, to cripple you, to kill, steal and destroy you, as it says in John 10.10. 10. So it's really important we realise that what we have here is an invisible enemy who fires things from a distance, who is powerful, who knows things about us, about history, about all sorts of things, and even knows more than us about God in many ways because he's got access to God's word and he's been in his presence. And he even tried against Jesus to use the very word of God against him, but he, he twisted it and Jesus saw through it. It's really important we don't underestimate him. It's just really important that we understand that we do have authority over him, but we have to have it uh, in humility and in authority and standing in God's word and in the name of Jesus. So we need to be walking with God, not just say I'm a Christian. You know, you've got to be one, not just say you're one. You've got to walk with God, walk in his word, walk in prayer. So what is it we need to know? Well, the first thing is uh, there was a verse that I picked up today from Psalm 94, 19. It says this, it says, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Now, Psalm 94 is, is a psalm all about uh, a, a believer or a follower of God who is being oppressed by other believers. So in other, other people that are followers of God or covenant people, if you like. So they are oppressing uh, their own people because they're wealthy, they're in position, and they're, they're taking advantage of those that aren't in those positions and, and that wealthy. And this, this lament that is in Psalm 94 is, is the psalmist saying, you know, they're coming against us, Lord, but I'm going to trust in you. And it says clearly that he has anxiety and that this anxiety is, is overwhelming. But the thing that keeps this psalmist going is the thought of God, is the consolation of God. The word consolation means to be comforted by God and to realise the compassion of God in your life. And I think it's really key when we think about anxiety, about how what we think about, you know, the devil is throwing things into our mind. Uh, he's, he's trying to knock us off track. The things that come into our mind, we need to be thinking about the compassion of God and the comfort that God brings us. I have a lot of experience with anxiety. I had many years where suddenly I was playing football one day. I'm on a football pitch and football's flying around me and doing my normal thing, chasing the ball, doing whatever. Suddenly, just one day, I'm standing on the football pitch and I had, this is a full game, I had this thought about just the most evil things going through my head and just suddenly the game is passing me by. The ball's going this way, that way and I'm standing in the middle of this pitch. People must have thought I was mad thinking, wow, I'm evil. And it just came on me like a cloud. It was just the most incredibly horrible thing. And I remember from that day, things started to really get bad. I used to uh, just start to get anxious about everything. And I remember there was two key events around that, that that I think were linked to this. One was I was in an alpha course and helping. I wasn't a pastor or anything like that. And I was helping on an alpha course. And I sat with this guy and he said to me, uh, he'd been depressed and anxious for years. And it's crippling his life. He's high on lots of tablets. And he said, I have this problem with my thoughts. He says, my thoughts uh, are always evil all the time. He says, I can't get away from them. And he told me about some of the thoughts. And I said, that's just really sad. And I didn't really know what to say to him. Not long after that, I started to get exactly the same thoughts as this man. I started to get these evil thoughts coming into my mind. It was almost like they transferred onto me. I cannot explain it. It was awful. And, and then something else happened around that time. I had a, 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 an unhealthy uh, sexual sin, if you like. I had a relationship with someone that was wrong. And it just made me spiral even further down. And now this anxiety and these thoughts and this depression were just crippling me. It got to the point where every single day I'd wake up at eight o'clock or around that time, uh, if, if it was eight o'clock, but within an hour, uh, I would start to get these thoughts coming in. So at eight o'clock I'd wake up, I'd feel okay. Around nine o'clock, the thoughts would just all flood in. I'd wake up every day thinking, please don't flood in today. I could, it was like clockwork. An hour after I woke up, there would be all these thoughts, dark, evil thoughts just coming in and flooding my mind. It was awful, just like a cloud that came upon me. And there was no reason for it. 
and the type of thoughts that I used to get there were you know I'd watch the news and see murder on TV and I think perhaps I'm a murderer how irrational is that I've never murdered anyone I don't want to but I started thinking what if I'm like that and, and I, I wouldn't be able to look at knives anymore I'd have to hide all the knives in the house I, I'd just be scared you know, uh, if, if I saw something that had something to do with a gay person, I thought, perhaps I'm gay. It was completely irrational. I had to stop uh, being around people. Uh, I had to stop doing things in church. Uh, I, I just I just stayed in and, and stared at the wall most of the time. It was just horrendous. And it got so bad that I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd be gnashing my teeth. And I'd wake up just at the point where I was pushing my top teeth out with the bottom teeth. And like they were going to snap. It was awful. I just had a horrendous time. I broke up relationship with the girl that I was dating at the time. She was a nice girl. Uh, you know, I, I stopped doing things. It just crippled me. And I cannot explain, you know, how it really appeared. It was just bizarre. And so I, I wanted to try and do something about it. So I started to pray about it. And, and, and it got so bad that there was this time when I was reading the Bible and, and praying about it. I read the verse in scripture that basically Jesus says that anything could be forgiven no matter what you say against the Son of Man but if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit uh, you will not be forgiven in this age or the next and these words then latched themselves onto me because I'd already got all of these other anxieties going through my head now I was thinking oh no what if I blaspheme the Holy Spirit uh, and if I haven't what if I'm gonna and now my head was trying to get me to say things that weren't right effectively my mind had gone and, and, and I was starting to um, having you know if I was saying to myself don't think about blasphemous sports my mind was thinking about them it's like saying don't think of a blue elephant what are you thinking of now a blue elephant you know so you start picturing what you're thinking I was in a terrible state and and it was awful I would love to tell you that that depression and that anxiety went on for a few weeks and a few months even better a few days it went on for years absolute years and I was just stuck and didn't know what to do and I wanted to I've told you all that it's a big story I, I wanted you to know it because I want you to know that I have been through this I was utterly depressed I was desperately depressed and I was desperately anxious all of the time I, I just there was not any break whatsoever and it affected every part of my life and I want to tell you today I am completely and utterly set free I may occasionally have some negative thoughts, but what's happened since has set me free so that if any negative thoughts, because the enemy's never going to stop firing the flaming arrows at you, are they? Is he? So I obviously still get that, and I obviously get bad times, but I've never gone back to where I was, and it's because God has given me the tools to fight back now. I've learned a lesson from that time I went through. So what happened? Well, you've heard about the long story and all the things that I went through. There was a, I'd love to tell you that, you know, the, the process to being set free was, was quick. It was not. It was a hard, hard slug, uh, slog. And it started with this. So the first thing I did was I prayed heavily every single day. I found these books. My mum had given me a load of old Christian books uh, years before, and they're in a bag in the back of my car. And, and I just went through them and I found this book on spiritual warfare. It was an old book, it was torn, it was all over the place. And there were some verses of scripture in there that, that really stuck with me and I'll share them with you. The first was Revela uh, so Roman 12, Romans 12, 2. It says, so do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to, be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing will. When I read that, I knew inside my heart that winning this battle was going to have to be me winning the battle of the mind. I was going to have to think differently. I was going to have to win this whole thought process that was going in my head. It was an impossible task, but I knew that it was the only way I was going to be able to do it. So I had to submit myself to God. It got so bad that at one stage I can remember to this day sitting on my toilet and saying to God, God, I'm going to hell, aren't I, because of these evil thoughts, especially the blasphemous ones. I said, that's it for me, I'm gone. Um, but I want you to know something, God. I love you so much, and I love what your word says about you so much, that I'm going to serve you anyway, even if I'm going there. I don't want anyone else to go there, even if I am. That's what I really thought about myself. But when I read this scripture, 
I realised that my mind was set up against me by the enemy and I had to take it back. I had to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. So I had to become new in my thinking. The other verse was this, Philippians 4, 6, uh, 4 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, this is a verse that really hit me about what you are thinking about. You know, what you see on the telly, what you hear on the radio, what you entertain in your conversations, everything. I realised if I was thinking about negative things, entertaining negative things, it was polluting my mind. And the only way to take my mind back was to start to change what I was thinking about. Thinking about things that were praiseworthy and pure and good. You know, I had to change everything. So I started to go through all of my, my, my videos and, and, or, or DVDs and I found things. There was a, a DVD there my cousin lent me and it was a, just a, not a nice DVD. I, I turned it on for 10 minutes and didn't watch it. It was awful. Um, it was a really horrendous DVD. I started getting things like that and leaving it on my doorstep. And one day my cousin came to visit me and he said, why is my DVD on your doorstep? I was like, I was going to bring it back. I don't want it in the house anymore. It's polluting my mind. You know, I had to take these things seriously. You might be sitting there thinking, well, Mike, that's a bit over the top, isn't it? It's really not. What you watch, you know, Jesus says that the eyes are the lamp of the body. You know, if the eyes aren't healthy, then the body's not healthy. It, what you're watching and what you're allowing to go into your mind will utterly, utterly destroy you if you, if you take in the wrong things for too long. So I decided to change those things. And then James 4, 7 said, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee you you know I went on this new uh, new process every day whereby I was changing my thinking and I was verbally rebuking Satan I was saying to Satan that's a lie that's a lie I'm not believing that now to think that I might have done that for a few days and felt better it just wasn't the case I did this for months possibly for a year or more I still do it a little bit now when a bad thought comes in I rebuke it and I start to think about something that is good. I take scripture that is true and praiseworthy and trustworthy and I speak it over these thoughts because I don't want them and I won't accept them. And, you know, I know you might be thinking, well, that's potty. It worked. Look at me now. You can't tell me for four years I had anxiety and depression and, and just my life was going down the drain. That, that It just suddenly goes away. If you've suffered depression and anxiety, you know it doesn't go away. I didn't take one tablet. I've never taken a depressive tablet or whatever they're called, antidepressants. I've never done it. I just went through this, this process of rebuking bad thoughts, rebuking Satan and changing it for good thoughts and good things. What else happened? This is where the miraculous comes in. I decided in that period, just, just as I was starting to turn the corner, in fact, I probably did just before, so I've, I've sort of gone ahead and gone back. So just before... I went to the doctors to speak to them about an issue that I was having, including this. And there was a locum doctor, it was African, I don't know which part of Africa is from, but I told him about this and he knew that I had a little bit of faith. And I was shocked at what he was going to do next because I thought he would give me some tablets. And he said, Michael, he says there's only one thing you can do. And I looked at his doctor thinking, oh, this is going to be interesting. He goes, you need to bathe yourself in the blood of the lamb. You need to repent of all the things you've ever done wrong in your life. He says you need to take the blood of the lamb and you need to cover every part of your life in it. He says that's how you will be free. And I will give you a blood test as well. And that was it. That was his advice. He basically said you're a sinner and you need to repent. And you need to invite Jesus into every part of your life. And then it dawned on me. The unhealthy relationship that I'd had. And, and, and all of the things that I'd done. I needed to, to give them over to God once and for all and say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I needed to change my direction. So I did exactly what I did. I repented and I've spoke good scripture into my life and I got rid of things and, and I decided what I watch is important and all of those other things and the people that I hang out with, it's important. And then a week later, I went back for my blood test. Different doctor. He's an Indian doctor. Guess what? He's a Christian as well. I tell him about the situation. He says, your blood, you're organically fine, he said. 
I want you to come in on my day off on Tuesday. I, I do paperwork on a Tuesday and I'm going to help you. He was a Christian. He started giving me good thinking processes and all sorts. And uh, it was just incredible. Now, to say that those two instances healed me, they didn't. But they set me on a track. So I had those instances where God had blatantly given me these people in my path. Same doctor's surgery, two Christians uh, from two different parts of the world. And, and they gave me some good advice. Then I started putting all that thinking process back, back into it. And I started rebuking Satan and changing my thinking, etc., etc., as I've already said. And, uh, and I just went along with that. And I did it every day. There were days where it failed miserably. I would be in my head, I would be saying no to Satan, and I would be thinking of scripture. Uh, and some days I would be like, yes, this is working. Other days it would just win and, and, and I'd be on the floor. But every day I got up again and started again. Every single day. I used to get my quilt out from my, my bedroom, bring it through to my front room in my flat, lay it out as a square, put on some God TV, and, uh, and I would get the Bible out and I'd pray and I'd just ask God to fill me with his spirit and I'd just be there, uh, just speaking good things into my life and listening to good stuff. I started to make sure that I submitted to God and I resisted Satan and he fled me. And this is how he fled me. This is the incredible part. I was asleep one night and I had a dream. And I'd been praying that God will set me free. And I had this dream. And in this dream, I was walking down an alley. And on, uh, at the alley, there was two uh, bouncers with their teeth missing, evil-looking blokes. And they had two spit buckets that you get in boxing. And they were full of blood. And I looked at these guys, and I'm like, this is not right. So I walked past them, and I went down this alley. And there was a bar. So I went into the bar because I needed a toilet. So I went to the back of the bar, went into the toilet, and I was at the urinal. As I was standing there, I felt this person grab my arm and pull it back. And as I turned round, there was this man. And this man said to me, you belong to me. And I pulled my arm back and I said, no, I do not. And I ran out of that place and I never went back. This dream was so, so real. Everything to the brickwork, to the lights, to everything. I just knew everything was just so real. Uh, and, and it obviously wasn't, but it was almost like it was a real dream. Spiritually, it was, it was there for me. You know, after that time, with that dream, and with, with the continuing to, to rebuke Satan, and to, to think about what's good and what's right, it stopped. The anxiety started to disappear. And I found myself not only uh, in a place where the, the anxiety was disappearing, it was still there to a point, but now I was strong enough, and I knew how to conquer it. And then shortly after that, I was called in to be a pastor. And I've always said, unless I went through that time, I'd never be strong enough to be a pastor. Never. I'd never be strong enough to do it. Because if that had happened now, why the pastor, I would be crippled. God was preparing me for a spiritual battle. And I want to say to you today that anxiety is real. And what I've been through won't necessarily be the answer to what you're going through. But I want you to know that it... it the, the clear thing for me is what we pollute ourselves with um, and, and what we replace it with. Get rid of the stuff in your life that isn't right and then cling to God and let his consolation uh, comfort you and, and bring you com and, and his compassion bring you that love and that joy that, that, that it releases when you think about how good he is. You will always be in a spiritual battle. Ephesians 6 says there will always be, that you know, the devil just doesn't disappear forever. He will come back and try his luck with you over and over again. But I spent every day giving myself to God, rebuking bad thoughts, replacing them with scripture. And I, I received dreams and I had visions and I had times where God just encouraged me and he set me free. And I want to say to you today, if you're going through anxiety, don't you dare believe that you have to have it forever. I don't know. Some people have it for longer than others. I had it for about three or four years, but I was set free. And the way I was set free was by the word of God, in the spirit of God through praying, and by actively submitting to God, by getting rid of the things in my life that wasn't right. So I, I don't know if that's of any help to you today, but when we walk with God, it doesn't set us free uh, from the attacks that Satan will send. And I just want to say to you today that if you ever need any help with this, you can come to me and, and or one of our team, I'm not going to be available for everyone, I've not got that much time, but we've got people that can can pray with you and can lead you to scripture and, and I, I'll tell you one last thing uh, I remember going to see Pastor John Bridger after 
I've got some some way into this. And, uh, and I sat down with him and he said, well, tell me what's wrong, Mike. And I said, I can't tell you because I'm scared that if I tell you, it'll happen to you. Because I remembered that guy that I'd sat next to and he told me about his bad thoughts and then it happened to me. And I also remembered about reading that verse about the unforgivable sin and, uh, and the fact that you can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And so I, and by the way, the context of that verse is very different. You know, it's, it's about Jesus saying, those, there's people that are with me and those that are against me. If they're against me and, and they're, they're scattering people rather than gathering people. Um, and they would do that by saying that Jesus is evil um, and, by the, and he heals and, and casts out demons by uh, an evil spirit. Uh, basically, they were calling the Holy Spirit evil. And to do that is to reject the Holy Spirit. If you reject the Holy Spirit, how can you be resurrected from the dead? You can't be. You can't because you're resurrected by the Holy Spirit. So therefore you cannot reject him. However, if you believe in Jesus and you are, uh, you are uh, wanting him, regardless of the, the mind games that you have played on you, uh, if you're following those and you're worried about losing Jesus or the Holy Spirit, then it already proves that you are trying to be his and that you're not against him. So, uh, you know, if you want me to explain that a bit more, speak to me. But... You don't have to worry about that. That was being used as a lie by Satan who uses scripture as a lie. But when I sat down and told John, I said, I can't tell you. And he, he basically made me tell him. And so I told him and his response was this. He said, why haven't you come to me earlier? I was afraid. But John was ready to help. And what I want to say to you today is don't run. Get help. Do listen to your doctors. You know, do take the tablets that are recommended. But I want you to know that there's a spiritual battle here. There's a spiritual victory here. And it isn't a quick one. Although sometimes God might do it instantly, he can. Sometimes he takes us on a journey through it. And you have friends in the church. And if you're not in church, you're watching this from afar. You need to be in church because we're here to encourage each other. Scripture and the spirit and God will have this victory over this. But it is a journey. And that's why we're in church to journey together. Do not believe that you have to be with this forever, although I'm not promising it will be quick and that there's a fix straight away. But I know that you can overcome this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for anyone that is out there listening to this and has suffered with depression or anxiety. Lord, I pray that you will give them the words from your word uh, and promises that you know no one will ever snatch us from your hand. And Lord, I pray that you will give us the courage and the conviction to walk in your word and in your spirit and the, to show us the way to victory. Lord, there are so many people with mental health problems in this world. I just know that you have the answer and you have the victory. And I pray that you will help those people that are listening to this to know what to do, where to look. And I pray your spirit will guide them to the right places. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a really good week and uh, looking forward to getting back together soon.